Hello, this is a lesson on P2 electricity, lesson number six, which is mains electricity. My name is Mr. Cooper. I'm a director of science for our Grange Academies Trust. Um, I'm going to go through the lesson with you today. So if you can remove any distractions, any mobile phones or switch them off and you'll need a pen and paper in order to go through some of the exercises. Now let's look at the starter activity. So here's a starter activity. All you have to do is write down how you'd power these three objects. You've got a torch and you've got a mobile phone and you've got a toaster. So quickly, 30 seconds just to go through how you'd power these objects. Okay, fairly straightforward exercise. You've got battery power for the mobile phone and you've got the torch. Of course, you charge your battery, which is slightly different uh, to the mains, but overall your phone will use a battery and a torch will also use a battery. Your toaster, however, uses mains electricity and that's what we're looking at today. Okay, so let's look at some of the outcomes today. Our Aspire outcome is to explain the differences between alternating and direct current. And then the challenge outcome is to describe properties of mains electricity in the UK. So for the first activity, we're going to look at what we could describe as the war of the currents. Uh, and this war was pretty much between Edison, someone that you may have heard of, and Tesla. Uh, a connection, of course, or something that you may have heard of in the news. So what I want you to do is to watch the following clip and answer the following questions. First question, who invented a method of supplying electricity with direct current? The second question is who invented a method of supplying electricity with alternating current? And then the final question, question number three, what was the advantage of alternating current over direct current? current. So I'm going to leave you just to watch this clip. Nikola Tesla was born on July 10th, 1856 in the territory of modern day Croatia to his two Serbian parents. Tesla grew up into a bright, inquisitive, yet eccentric child who found himself fascinated by the world around him. Tesla once tried to fly by jumping off the roof of a barn while holding onto an umbrella. He devised a bug-powered motor using June bugs, but had to abort his experiment after a friend decided to eat some of the bugs. Tesla once attempted to generate electricity by rubbing two cats together, which resulted in two very mad cats and a scratched up Tesla. On June 6, 1884, Tesla arrived in the United States. He was hired by Thomas Edison to do basic electrical engineering, but moved up to redesigning the direct current generators that ran Edison's business. Edison offered Tesla $50,000, or about $1.1 million in today's currency to make these improvements. After completing this assignment, Tesla asked about the payment for his work. Edison didn't pay out the money. He claimed that he wasn't serious about the payment, that Tesla didn't understand American humor. Tesla eventually left Edison's company and partnered with George Westinghouse in 1888 to commercialize his system of alternating current. The problem here is that alternating current competed with direct current, which Thomas Edison built his entire monopoly on. Thus began the War of the Currents. Edison started a massive smear campaign against Tesla and alternating current, trying to scare people away from using it. He spread false information about it, lobbied against its use, and went so far as to electrocute a circus elephant in public. Basically, Edison was a jerk. Direct current had plenty of its own faults. It was the cause of death of countless children and created numerous house fires. Also, the maximum reach of direct current was about two miles, which meant a substation had to be built to continue the current. To this day, they would still be building substations if they were going to get electricity across the U.S. Tesla's alternating current could go for hundreds of miles. Lights running on alternate current were bright white, unlike dull yellow lights running on direct current. Eventually, Edison had to give in to the demands of the people and had to go with alternating current. Tesla's influence spreads much further than electricity. He had over 700 patents and came up with ideas such as robots, spark plugs, the electric art lamp, an x-ray device, bladeless turbines, wireless communication, laser technology, neon lights, remote control, cellular communication, radio, an electrical bath to remove germs, radar, and much more. 
Tesla died from heart failure in a room of the New York Hotel on January 7, 1943. Despite his fame and influence on the world, he died with significant debts and all alone. While Edison is known as the inventor of the century, Tesla is only acknowledged as a paragraph in today's history books, forgotten and unappreciated. Thus ends the story of Nikola Tesla, genius and inventor. So, electric current is the movement of charge. In order to tra transfer their energy, it doesn't matter which direction they are moving in. So we've seen electrons, uh, we've described charge before. So electrons carry the charge, um, whether it's going from positive to negative or negative to positive, it doesn't really matter. They're still gonna be, they're still gonna be able to transfer their energy. If the current all flows in one direction, it is called direct current. And the potential difference is always the same in the same direction and it doesn't change polarity now polarity means it goes from the positive to the negative which i'll demonstrate uh, on on a graph um, coming up if the current is constantly changing direction it's called alternating current which is ac and the potential difference does change polarity it goes from a positive to a negative and sometimes it can do this switching of positive to a negative very quickly. And we call that the frequency. So the frequency of it going from a positive to a negative can be up to, let's say, 50 hertz. So 50 times a second. What I'd like you to do is make notes on those three bullet points in your books. Okay, here's a demonstration of DC where you've got a battery and you can see the red dots which represent the current, um, which represent the electrons carrying the charge and they're all going from the positive to the negative in that direct current. So it's very similar to how a, a basic torch would work or a very simple circuit that you do in a classroom using a battery. Alternating current, as you can see, is moving forward and the electrons are moving back so as a graph that would show that it's going from the positive to the negative and the number of times it does that per second is described as the frequency in a dc circuit your potential difference or your voltage will stay the same in an alternating current the potential difference or voltage will change. So these are two ways an electrical engineer would measure current. On the left, we've got a multimeter. Now we'll have some of those in the classroom and multimeter, multi meaning many, meter meaning the device that you can measure something with. Uh, means it can it can take many readings of uh, certain components around electricity such as resistance, voltage and current. On the right you've got an, an oscilloscope um, which can take the readings of potential difference over a period of time. So how these things, these two items would differ is the fact that a multimeter you can take multiple readings, but you only take that reading one point in time. So you can imagine a multimeter could be similar to a stop clock where it's a start and it's a stop. 
you've you watch someone race over a period of time but then you stop it when they finish the race an oscilloscope differs in the fact that it can take a reading a uh, over time so rather than just stopping the race you can actually record the race over a period of time so an oscillosc oscilloscope can take multiple readings such as voltage and current over a period of time and you can also change the display so it can give a more accurate reading so a multimeter can take a snapshot of a reading whereas an oscilloscope can take a reading over a period of time so an oscilloscope has a has a display on it the potential difference of a on, on a certain oscilloscope is represented by the y axis and then time is represented by the x axis so we can see on the left hand side we've got direct current the potential difference of a direct current supply is steady and it always stays the same in the same direction so we can see the one yellow line at dc on the right hand side we've got the potential difference of an alternating current and the supply follows a repeated pattern it rises to a peak returns to zero and then changes direction as it goes into the negative polarity and then it rises again goes into the positive and then back down to the negative and this happens over a period of time so at one particular point the voltage will be zero and then it will rise to a peak in the negative before then it rises to a peak in the positive and it does this as we've said frequently uh, up to our main supply which is 50 times per second it's going from the peak in the positive direction to the peak in the negative direction so here we've got an image of an oscilloscope trace for a UK mains electricity. So decide, given a reason, whether you believe this is to be alternating current or direct potential difference. As we can see, this one goes into the negative then it rises again to the positive back to the negative and then back again to the positive so because the alternating current keeps changing polarity the potential difference keeps changing so the mains electricity in the uk is an alternating current supply it has a frequency of 50 hertz and a potential difference of approximately 230 volts so it means that it's going from the positive to the negative volts 50 times per second and the peak voltage is in the positive and the neg negative is 230 volts this is something that you'll be expected to recall uh, by the time you come to your exams So cells, batteries and solar cells are all sources of direct potential difference. How would the oscilloscope trace be different for these? So I'll just give you 20 seconds just to sketch uh, a quick diagram of how direct potential difference would look on a oscilloscope. Okay, so we should have a diagram similar to this where the trace is represented by the red line and you can still see zero vol volts. For this particular reading, if we took each square to represent one volt, you've then got two volts. And then for this particular reading, it would reach about 2.4 volts. Okay, so for the following slide, what I'd like you to do is to copy the following summary into your books. 
And if you can, can you describe in terms of electrons the difference between direct current and alternating current? Now, when it comes to current, there are two types that you need to know about. Now, when it comes to alternating current, current two types which you often write as AC, and direct current, which you often write as DC. AC, and direct current, in an alternating current, DC. the direction of the current is constantly an swapping back current, and forth. The direction of the current so the charge flows in one direction, back and forth. then the other direction, so the and back again. We get this alternating current whenever we use an alternating we potential difference, alternating or alternating voltage, alternating potential so one that fluctuates between positive voltage. and negative. So one that fluctuates we can see this if we measure the potential difference or current over time. They constantly fluctuate between negative and positive. And at the circuit level, this means that the direction in which the charge is flowing will constantly be swapping back and forth. Will constantly be swapping back and forth. Here in the UK, all main supply electricity, which is the, the electricity UK, that comes from our plug sockets and powers our computers and kettles and so on, is AC. And specifically, and UK main is supply AC. is 50 hertz and, and around 240 volts, is 50 hertz which means that on our bottom graph, volts. the potential difference which fluctuates from positive 240 volts to negative 240 volts and back again. 50 times, times every second. And, back again. and so the current would also second. fluctuate at that same rate. And so the current would also fluctuate at that One same thing rate. we should mention is that you'll sometimes hear that the voltage One is 230 volts rather than 240. Basically, it can be either in the UK. So they're both correct Basically, as far as your exams are concerned. UK. So they're both correct as far as your exams Direct are concerned. current, on the other hand, is produced by a direct, direct potential difference, on the other hand, which is either positive or negative the entire time. Which is either positive or so the negative charge is the always time. flowing in the same direction. So the charge is we always find direct current in, in things like cells and batteries, we find like those in your phone in or like a cells and batteries. Like those in your phone The last thing we need to cover is that in order to get these potential difference the first time graphs, is that in order we use devices called oscilloscopes, time graphs, which display the graphs on a monitor. Which display the graphs on a monitor. Anyway, that's everything for today. So, hope you found the video helpful. Okay, I'll just if pause did, the screen there for your friends, two minutes just to make sure you that time. you've got that um, combination of alternating current and direct current into your books.
Okay, now let's have a look at some past exam questions. So here we've got the diagram shows the traces produced on an oscilloscope when it is connected across different electricity supplies A, B, and C. Which of the traces could have been produced by the mains electricity supply? And also give a reason for your answer. So it's worth two marks, so I'll give you two minutes just to complete that question. Okay, let's have a look at the mark scheme. So the answer is of course A, um, and the reason being is the fact that A is alternating current. And you also get the mark if you say that because B and C are both direct current. Um, or alternative answers could be the fact that it changes direction or potential difference, uh, and we accept voltage instead of potential difference. Uh, just simply writing it goes up and down is insufficient because it's not enough detail. You need to actually use the word alternating or changing direction. So let's have another look at another question. So in the UK, mains electricity is 230 volts AC supply. Question A, what is the frequency of the AC mains electricity in the UK? And then B, what is an electric current? And then B, part two, explain the difference between alternating current, electricity supply, and a direct current electricity supply. So for the total of four marks for those three questions, I'll give you four minutes in order to complete them.
OK, let's have a look at the mark scheme then. So the frequency of the UK main supply is 50 hertz. And that's just a basic recall fact um, that we just need to, to know and be able to recall. Uh, to describe uh, a current is a flow of charge or flow of electrons. And then the description of alternate, alternating current is the fact that it's constantly changing direction, whereas a direct current always flows in the same direction. So thank you for listening. That completes our lesson uh, on a, a basic introduction to mains electricity. Thank you.